Coming up in today's show, I'm going to give you some of the hottest takes I have for the New York Giants this season. But first, I want to hear from you in the comment section. Do it right now. Comment down below your hottest take for the Giants this year. Hot take season is here, and I'm going to give you my hottest take for this upcoming season, and then we're going to take the pulse of the Giants fans out there as they give me some of their hot takes, and I react to those. Welcome into Giants Now by Chad Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Let's dive into it. My hot take for this season centers around this man right here, number eight, the $40 million per year quarterback, the $160 million man, Daniel Jones. My hot take, Daniel Jones is going to take a Jalen Hurts type of leap this season. If you rewind the clock and you go back before the 2022 season started, nobody looked at Jalen Hurts as a top 10 quarterback. He was a guy that the Eagles didn't even believe in. They executed a trade for Russell Wilson, but they were not able to get it done. So I believe that Daniel Jones can take a Jalen Hurts type leap. I mean, when you look at what Jones has done, while the passing touchdowns are not beautiful, I understand that again and again and again and again. But notice what stats get better every year for Daniel Jones. The interceptions, they go down every single year. The completion percentage goes up every single year. So he's becoming more efficient. He's coming better. He's becoming better at taking care of the ball while also becoming just a better overall quarterback, throwing for a career high 3,200 yards this year. And he played in every game in the regular season uh, outside of week 17 when the Giants did not use their starters. Another reason that I think Daniel Jones is going to take a big leap is the way he's able to use his legs. Yes, he only threw for 15 touchdowns this year, but he had another seven on the ground. So that's 22 touchdowns. He also threw, I think, two touchdowns in the game against Minnesota. And he also, uh, I think he had a touchdown against the Eagles. Not 100% sure, but that's what? 24 touchdowns in a year for Daniel Jones. And that is okay. But the man is one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the NFL, whether you like it or not. Rushed for over 50 first downs this year for the Giants. 57 rushing first downs for Daniel Jones this year, uh, which is a huge number as he is one of the league's leading chain movers when it comes to using his feet at the quarterback position. I also want people to remember this. Was it against a really bad defense in the Minnesota Vikings? Yes. But that same Minnesota Vikings defense won how many games, Seeps? 13 games. And uh, I'll also ask my friend Patrick Seaman another question. Didn't this same Minnesota Vikings defense pick off Josh Allen to win a football game on the last drive of the game? They didn't let Josh Allen go the distance? We uh, that's weird that they did that against Josh Allen and they also beat 13 other teams. But when Daniel Jones gets their defensive coordinator fired because he's the first player all time in a playoff game with 300 plus passing yards, two plus passing touchdowns and 70 rushing yards in the NFL in a playoff game. It's just their defense sucked and they were no good, which may be true. But keep that same energy when you're talking about other teams and how they fared against the Minnesota Vikings. Jones was dominant in that game against the Vikings. He had 78 rushing yards, 300-plus passing yards, two touchdowns, completed almost 75% of his throws. He was electric. He was a one-man band for that offense, and he did it against a defense that whether you want to think they're bad or not, they only lost three games in the regular season. So I want to ask you this question, or four games in the regular season. My math is bad. Do you believe in Daniel Jones. I want to hear from you down in the comments section. I think he's going to make a big leap. I think he's going to be looked at as a fringe top 10 quarterback guy. I believe he's going to win another playoff game this year, and then we'll see what happens and go from there. But do you believe in number eight, Daniel Jones, type Y for yes, type N for no? A hot take coming in from my guy Cameron Johnson says, Daniel Jones will finish the year as a top seven quarterback with now now that he has plenty of weapons. This is the most talent that Daniel Jones has ever had as his di disposal. Uh, he's never played with a player nearly as talented or in the prime of their career like Darren Waller. And you add a guy like Isaiah Hodgins. You get a healthy Sterling Shepard, a healthy Wandale Robinson. You get Isaiah Hodgins. You get Paris Campbell. You get Jalen Hyatt. 
This is the most help at the receiver position and tight end position that Daniel Jones has ever had in his career. And I believe we're going to see a direct reflection. More talent around him equals more results. And I'm going to stand on that. I do believe that. Gilly coming in with a hot take says, the Giants are going to sweep the division. That's a hot take. No doubt about it. Um, as bad as I want the Giants to go 6-0 and in the division, I'm just not sure it's going to happen. I think that they can sweep Washington, and then I'm hoping that they split against the Eagles and the Cowboys. Um, maybe they go 4-2 and two in the division. Maybe they go 3-3. Three and three. But, Gilly, I pray you're right. I hope you're right. And if you are right, we're going to be partying on this channel if the Giants beat the Eagles and Cowboys four times this season. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Joey DeLuca, what's up, Brody? Jalen Hyatt, over 1,000 receiving yards. I want Jalen Hyatt to have a really good rookie year. I'm just a little bit worried that he may not be all that involved in the offense to start the season. And for that reason, he may not be able to be a 1,000-yard receiver. Because when you talk about the Giants' wide receiver depth chart, there are just so many bodies. There are so many players. Like Isaiah Hodgins is ahead of him. Darius Slayton is ahead of him. Paris Campbell is ahead of him. Sterling Shepard's ahead of him. Paris, did I say Paris Campbell? There's like six guys right now, potentially, ahead of Hyatt. Um, I think he's going to be a good pro. I think he's going to be a really good player for this team for a long time. And he's going to have some splash plays this year where he flashes why he was talked about as being a top 50 selection in the NFL draft, but he slid to the third round for the Giants. Whether it's this year, next year, or the year after, there's going to be a couple of thousand yard years for Jalen Hyatt. My man Mike coming in with a hot take says Aziz Ojolari leads the Giants with 22 sacks. If Aziz Ojolari finishes the season with 22 sacks, just shy of Michael Strahan's record, that's going to be pretty impressive. What was impressive was how often Ojolari was able to get after the quarterback this year. I mean, he played in seven games, but only played in 50-plus percent of the snaps, I believe, three times this year. And he had five and a half sacks. He also had eight sacks in his rookie year in 13 games started. He is one of the, has one of the best pass rush win rates in the National Football League. He can get after the quarterback. He is an athletic freak. He can bend the edge. He's got the size to where he can't be punked by these offensive tackles. He's got the athleticism to beat him off the corner. He's got a great first step off the line of scrimmage. It, it's just injury. The only thing that has held Aziz Ojolari from reaching the potential that we all think he has is injury. The best ability is availability, and if he is available this year, his ability is going to shine through as I think he's the most talented pass rusher the Giants have, and that includes Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau. 22 sacks, that'd be pretty freaking sweet, though, for Aziz Ojolari. I think he's the best pass rusher we got. I hope Kayvon Thibodeau is better than him, because that means you got two really good guys, but if I had to bet who is better, if I had to make a bet of who I think has more sacks next year, I'd probably go with Ojolari, even though I'd be really worried about the games played for him and his injuries upcoming this year. As always, I just want to say thank you guys, and I appreciate you for tuning in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. If I didn't get to your hot take on the channel, on the video today, you can DM it to me over on Twitter, and uh, I'll respond, and uh, we'll chop it up.